We're again going to focus on the lawmaking responsibilities of the president. However, this time we're going to focus on the informal powers of the president. So what makes these different than formal powers is that informal presidential powers are not found in the Constitution, which often makes them controversial because they've been used by presidents to increase their power. And oftentimes as they increase their power, they're taking power away from Congress. So an example of a president's use of informal powers uh, is the president's use of the media. This is clearly something that the more modern day presidents can do um, because of the, the more accessibility of like the media and the more media outlets there are. Obviously, the media has grown in influence. So presidents often use what we call the bully pulpit, or sometimes it's called going public. This is when they use the media to basically persuade the American public and then the American public puts pressure on Congress to either propose a bill or to, to vote on a bill. Um, and presidents have done this in different ways. So, for example, somebody like President Obama used to go on daytime talk shows like The View to talk about issues that were important to him. The idea was to convince the viewer of that program to then put pressure on Congress to pass certain laws. Same thing with uh, President Trump, except he was a little bit different. He used like Twitter, like social media, and he would constantly try to use these tweets to influence the American public to then put pressure on Congress to do something that he wanted. So there's nothing in the Constitution about the president's use of the media. This is just something that has developed throughout American history. Um, other informal powers tend to be much more con controversial because, again, they're not listed in the Constitution. They tend to take some power away from Congress. So most presidents have used what we call executive orders. These are like signed presidential proclamations that sort of have like the same force that a law has that would have been passed by Congress, except this completely cuts Congress out and is just done by the president. So, for example, there are some pretty famous executive orders. Um, the numbers are not important, but each of them are indeed numbered. Executive Order 9066 was passed, was passed by President Franklin Roosevelt in 1942 following Pearl Harbor. Um, and once we were at war with Japan, one of the concerns of the United States government was that we wouldn't be able to tell a loyal Japanese American citizen from a potential Japanese spy. So unfortunately, this executive order basically called for the internment of Japanese Americans living on the West Coast. Anybody of Japanese ancestry was basically put in detention camps for the duration of the war. Congress didn't have anything to do with this. This was an executive order, a decision, a proclamation that was made by President Roosevelt. Uh, one that's more positive would be President Truman's Executive Order 9981 that was issued in 1948. So Congress uh, hadn't gotten around to doing this. Um, so President Truman took matters into his own hands. This executive order actually desegregated the military, which was still unfortunately segregated up until this point in time. So this executive order, without congressional approval, basically ended segregation in the military. And one from more modern American history that you'd be familiar with, that's President Trump signing Executive Order 13767 in 2017. This basically established the building of the border wall with Mexico. That was not um, built part of it um, by like a law passed by Congress because Congress couldn't agree. And President Trump had campaigned on this promise. He decided to do this via executive order. Congress gets very frustrated when presidents use executive orders because, again, they're not in the Constitution and they're taking away a basic responsibility that Congress typically has. Um, another informal presidential power that has been used to increase presidential power is what we call signing statements. Uh, a signing statement occurs when Congress sends the president a bill and he signs it and it goes into law. But after he signs it, he kind of attaches his own interpretation of what he believes the meaning of that law is and how he intends to enforce it. So a great example is um, in the early 2000s, uh, during the war on terror, there was an American military base in Cuba called Guantanamo Bay. Uh, this prison is where many suspected terrorists were sent. And one of the things that came out that the American government and military was doing is we were basically torturing um, suspected terrorists to get key information out of them. Um, there were some pictures and some information that leaked of this happening, and there was a big public outcry against it. Congress responded in 2005 by passing what's called the Detainee Treatment Act, 
which effectively ended the United States' use of torture. Um, when this bill that called for the end of torture ended up on um, President Bush's desk uh, in 2005, he signed it. However, he also attached a signing statement to the signing of the bill. The signing statement basically said that um, he was interpreting what Congress wrote as saying that, yes, torture would be banned, but that he could still authorize it if it meant in the future, basically uh, protecting the national security interests of the country. So he signed Congress's torture ban, but also attached interp interpretation to the signing of the bill that essentially he was leaving open open ended to potentially using it again in the future. And that's kind of not what Congress had intended at all. But that was a way for Bush to take this law into a little bit of a different direction. So both executive orders and signing statements have been informal powers used by American presidents to expand their power. And at the same time, they're expanding their power. They're taking power away from Congress, frustrating Congress a lot in the process.